Hello, it's Scott Manley here with another little, little mod feature here. We have Kerbal Construction Time, a mod which essentially adds construction time. It adds repair time for launch pads. It adds time to do R&D. It means that career mode is no longer, it doesn't take 30 seconds now to roll a rocket out to the launch pad, which could matter a great deal if you're playing, say, a career mode where life support is important and you find that you need to send a rescue mission. Can you build the spacecraft in time? Who knows? as well, playing with Kerbal Construction Time certainly adds a layer of realism. Now, right away, it's advised me that I should spend my points to upgrade my facilities. Uh, what happens is your facilities generate build points, which are essentially used to build spacecraft. It takes a certain amount to build a spacecraft, and by spending them, I can increase the rate at which spacecraft are built. So there, I'm going to get half a build point per second. Uh, I could build another... Uh, line, another production line, and that would build multiple rockets at the same time. It's actually more efficient to have multiple production lines going at once, but I'll leave that for now. You can also upgrade your R&D, so I can, by clicking on this, it'll increase the rate at which uh, my science, well, the rate at which things get unlocked. So it says four science per day. That means it will take in every day, you will unlock four science points worth of stuff, at least once you've unlocked the node. So you unlock the node and then it takes a few days for the science to actually come into your service. Research, I'm going to put a few points on that. What that means here is that as your production team builds a rocket, every 86,400 build points worth of rocket they build, you will get science back. So this is actually a way of getting science without actually, you know, flying around and doing science, right? Um, yeah, let's let's just keep this. I'll put a, another couple there, and that's enough for now. So we're just putting all our build stuff in my main vehicle assembly building. So we should have a couple of contracts already going. Oh, yeah, great. Okay. Yo, go away. Go away. Why is... Why is, I don't want that. Okay, so let's go. and We need to create a contract. Launch a vessel. Set an altitude. And now start building our vessel. So... Standard build process. Let's take a capsule. Let's put on a parachute because we want it to land safely. Let's put on a fuel tank and a rocket engine. So this uh, wonderful piece of space technology should be up for the task. But if I'm not sure, I can simulate it. So it comes when you click the launch button, it says you can build the vessel or simulate the vessel. Let's simulate the vessel. You have the option to start in orbit around any uh, location you've already been in, right? Also note, simulations cost money. But you can by doing simulations, of course, you can verify that a real spacecraft works, right? So, you know, it's, it's part of your management, right? Do you simulate or do you just go for it because you know that it's going to work? Okay, let's let's close, and we'll we'll start launching. We're gonna hold this stable, and hopefully we will be able to reach the magical altitude. Note that our simulation time is now running, and I can of course do science. But all I'm interested in is can this reach the 5,000 meter altitude without breaking apart or disintegrating? It's warning me that shoot deployment is dangerous because I have. Deadly re-entry. So yeah, no problem there. Let's uh, actually head over sideways and uh, explore some other biomes in this direction. So he would be able to do that. And yeah, let's uh, let's revert flight to the vehicle assembly, and we're ready to actually build it. So instead of going through the launch, you can uh, well you can go through the launch and you go to build vessel. But you can't actually launch it from here. What that's done is it's put it in the queue. It's told us that it's going to take two days, five hours, 15 minutes, and eight seconds. Now, so to actually do that, you have to wait that amount of time. So, Kerbal Construction Time tab is here, and I can click on the Vehicle Assembly Building, and it shows me that I have an untitled spacecraft, 0.1% complete. And it will be ready in one day, 14 hours, and whatever. So I'll just click Warp to Complete. It flashes very quickly through the days, and the engineers finally finish. Excellent. And notice I actually gained a bit of science, because I spent some uh, money in the R&D people to make sure that they would be able to get science from their, uh, from, their, from their work on building things. 
So now the vehicle's there, but it just sits in my storage. So to actually put it on the launch pad, I have to roll it out. And that, I guess, is going to take 36 minutes. So let's warp that. A lot of time warping here. So you can imagine that, you know, your station is in orbit and it's run out of life support and they need a rescue and you're trying to figure out if you can build something in this time. Okay, so we've now got it ready. It's on the pad. We're ready to launch, but I'm not going to launch it just yet because it'll be dark. So let's actually run time forward a little until it's daytime. Much better to launch during the daytime so we can actually appreciate the, the beauty of the Kerbal landscape. There, uh, we can fill it with Jebediah Kerman. We don't have the usual UI here. We just have this uh, very minimalist UI. But we're ready to go. Jebediah Kerman is sitting on the launch pad. Um, actually, I should probably see whether he's able to get out and do the EVA data and everything. But regardless, let's just launch and do the crew report. The shores look inviting as you watch the waves roll into the coast. Great, let's keep that day. Oh, 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 X. Uh, uh, wait, wait, wait. This is what happens when you use Ferrum Aerospace, right? Hey, oh, 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 oh. Yes, you see, didn't simulate this, did I? Ah, keep control, Jebediah, keep control. I should probably enable stability control. There we go. Back, heading into the air. Should have paid attention to this, of course. Ferrum Aerospace just does have that nasty habit of making your spacecraft flip over backwards. Okay, we're almost there. Excellent. Stay on target. Stay on target. Okay, and then uh, let's head over this way a little. We, we've made our, our limit. We've hit our whatever. And we've achieved our simulation. Okay, so let's put this into the right orientation. And actually, let's turn this again. Okay, let's set the deployment altitude to something reasonable here, and then we'll deploy the chute. So the parachute goes down, time acceleration, all the usual stuff. We're going to land out in the grasslands. We might have to use a little bit of fuel to slow our descent, our terminal descent into the ground, just to make sure that we don't break anything. There we go, and... 11 meters per second. Would probably be bad to hit the surface going at this speed. We'll probably break my rocket. So, just as we get down here, just ever so slightly. Yes, that should be enough. We'll just wait for us to get nice and close. Seven, six, five, four, three. Excellent. Landed safely. And we get all the usual data. Got this spacecraft to collect. Collect that. Excellent. So, first of all, we've recovered our spacecraft, and now, uh, if you go to the vehicle, actually, no, we can't do that here. So, first of all, if you look, we're now reconditioning the launch pad after the damage that uh, was done during the launch. While that's happening, we can send our scientists off on a quest to research things. So, while we have the points to research this, it now says it's going to take one day, six hours, zero minutes, and zero seconds. So, they're going to do that. We could pick one of these other things to research, might as well spend the money on it or spend the science on it. Three days and 18 hours for that one to unlock. So we can't immediately build spacecraft with those features. And of course, all this is going to be important when you have launch windows and stuff to hit. But actually, it's a little more complicated or the build times are actually quite, quite clever. So because I've launched this and recovered it, I actually have these parts in my part inventory. And also, if you look at the build time, the build time is now only 5 hours, 16 minutes and 22 seconds. The reason being that this is exactly the same rocket that was previously launched. This is equivalent to just refueling this spacecraft, right? Now I've clicked again, build, and now the next one says one day and 13 hours. That's because I've got to build a second one like it. So the game keeps track of these things and it does give you a big advantage if you want to build your space program around completely reusable stages that you just essentially refuel. So if we return to this space center, now we see the launch pad reconditioning is going to take one hour. And then after that, three and well, it says three hours and 45 minutes. So I guess it was even faster than I expected. I read five hours, but yeah, uh, that's going to get built super fast simply because it's a case of refueling it. So we refurbish the launch pad, get it ready for another customer. 
Then we build our spacecraft, and that's all built. And now we, of course, roll that out to the launch pad one more time. So this is very fast turnaround. This is less than 24, or less than one Kerbal day turnaround. Although it does uh, come out being night. So uh, we're ready to go. Next thing is basic rocketry. But in the meantime, let's actually run the clock a little faster. So we picked up some new mission goals. We're going to pass 12,000 kilometers. Uh, sorry, 12,000 meters, pardon me. And we picked up a contract to test the Mark 16 parachute at a reasonable altitudes, I hope. Okay, well, this time... This time I'm going to make him go uh, get crew report on the launch pad as well. Excellent. EVA, don't fall off. Thank you. Take data. Store data. Um, EVA report. This is the most precarious situation. Okay, so now we're ready to fly once again. And I think we can certainly go higher and faster, so let's go for it this time. Let's just keep pointing straight up. That should work a little better, a little more in my favor, and just a little bit off to the side, because I'd like to hit the water, ideally. I'm not sure how fast uh, I have to go, but having Ferrum Aerospace on my side will certainly help with getting those altitude limits. So 3,000... We're accelerating at about 2G. I need to leave just a little bit of fuel left here, just for the descent. Okay, so I think... I think this will get our, to our altitude. Oh, 12,000. Yeah, we're going to get to 12,000 meters. And we have parachutes and everything to open. So um, our speed isn't high enough. Now we're waiting for things. So let's uh, crew report. Oh, actually, let's reset that. Let's do a crew report. Crew. Wait, wait for it. Wait for it. Uh, no, we're still not high enough. And... Ah, no, no data there. Okay, well, let's watch this. So we're hoping that our speed hits 390 before 10 kilometers. Then we'll be able to get the points for testing this. And more science is always appreciated. Turn green, come on. You know you want to go faster. You know you want to go faster. I may not actually be able to do this because I think it's hitting terminal velocity right now. It's very unlikely I'm going to hit this speed before I run out of altitude. Well, never mind. It will be an easy thing to test in future uh, future junctures. Oh, well. Let's uh, set this altitude to something reasonable and deploy it. You know, now I look at the numbers on the parachute and I think that the the deadly re-entry is going to tell me that it's too dangerous for me to open the parachute at that's those speeds and altitudes. So that's going to be unfortunate. Anyway, the whole point of this isn't to show me doing this these missions again. It's to show you how Kerbal Construction Time works and how it can really enhance a career mode game. So yeah, the, the mod is Kerbal Construction Time, originally created by Eku Zaku, and it's currently maintained by Magico13. Definitely deserves a place if you're trying to be as realistically uh, realistic as possible. And even if you aren't going for the hyper-realistic approach, it does actually legitimately change the gameplay, perhaps. there's, I mean, there's a few situations where it really does vastly enhance the gameplay and punish you for your mistakes. And I like the fact that it adds a simulation mode, that it essentially lets you test your rockets for not quite free, but pretty close to free when you compare them to the actual cost of the rocket. So yes, check it out, Kerbal Construction Time. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.